Northland, New Zealand. Beautiful beaches, stunning islands, and home to the best rally roads in the world. Rally Wong Ray has always been a favourite event of mine. I haven't been here for a few years, but very fond memories, uh, obviously, with Rally New Zealand here as well. And you know, this is what made Rally New Zealand so famous, is all the camber and you're jumping through from corner to corner. They call them the Rally Highways of Gravel, a unique road style that means fast times and a lot of fun. The best way of almost thinking about it is like on the on the indie race car tracks where you've got those big banked uh, ovals and the, and the speeds that it allows you to do. And, and, it, and it's a lot like that on the gravel roads because if you get into the camber, you can carry a lot more speed because the car has that extra grip with the camber helping it. Likewise though, if you get up and over the camber, then it's very difficult to pull the car back into the inside of the corners. And with Hayden Patton winning WRC Argentina, there's a lot of support building to bring back WRC New Zealand. Yeah, I think everyone's excited. You just had to look at the spectators at Otago, how many people are out on every stage. And, you know, a lot of them had Hayden Patton gear, but just uh, seeing them all out there was fantastic. 16 stages, 275 kilometres of gravel and tarmac. Round two of the Brian Green Property Group New Zealand Rally Championship. Brought to you by Gull Liquid Horsepower, b and and driven by Dunlop. This is Rally Whangarei. Whangarei is the gateway city to New Zealand's northern province. It's a popular destination for sailors arriving across the Pacific. It's also home of New Zealand's annual round of the Asia Pacific Rally Championship. But it's the New Zealand Championship which is the star of the show and the big attraction, our own WRC superstar Hayden Padden, fresh from his maiden win at WRC Rally Argentina. It sort of hasn't really calmed down to be honest, we we're all straight almost back on the plane to come back to New Zealand and obviously uh, back here at home there's been a, a lot of media interest and uh, uh, a lot of support which has been great uh, but at the same time it hasn't really allowed us to, to catch our breath and uh, really sort of let the results sink in. The cars are a bit different. It's uh, obviously this car is a lot of fun to drive, but you know the braking capabilities and, and the grip capabilities aren't quite as high. So you just have to you know bring it back a notch and just remind yourself. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know the roads are so much smoother as well. You know the roads are completely contrasting. So in that respect, you can sort of push on a little bit more and, and enjoy it. The guys here in New Zealand are doing a great job. Um, you know they're doing things on a, a very tight budget uh, and production type cars. And you know, you've got to remember we've been driving non-stop almost for a long time now. Um, even before Dunedin, we'd already done three or four rallies of the year, a lot of tests, and, and that's the biggest advantage I've found is that when you're in the car so often, it's just fresh, it's natural, um, it, it, you don't have to think about it. So um, this is the biggest difference I've found, and I think the guys here in New Zealand, there's, there's three or four drivers here that we have in the national championship that I think can go in if they get the support into the support categories of the WRC, win those support categories, and then beyond that, you, you never know. So I think. Yeah. The level of our championship is as good as anywhere else in the world. This will be Patton's final outing in New Zealand for 2016 as WRC commitments take over. So defending champion Ben Hunt is well placed, lying second in the points after Rally Otago. Although we probably weren't the fastest uh, for a start there, we, you know, we definitely grew with the car and you know, even Tony and myself, we hadn't been in the car together since you know, Boy Rapper Rally last year. So. That just took a bit of gelling and you know, I think by the end of it we were starting to get a bit closer to you know, the 2015 times. David Holder took the battle to Ben Hunt through Rally Otago. At Otago we were the fastest uh, day one and then day two I got stuck in that mindset of looking behind me rather than just concentrating on what I'm doing. And in this sport you know, we don't even have to think about anyone else really. We can just drive what's in front of us and do our best, so it's a hard one because I'm planning on, you know, the, the plan is obviously to, to be leading the rally again and be in that situation all over again, but I've sort of been working hard in the last couple of weeks to, to what we're going to do when we get there. A large crowd turned out on Friday night for the start of the 2016 Rally Whangarei, many coming to see and meet the WRC hero Hayden Patton. Plenty of support for the other drivers too from this enthusiastic crowd. Day two of Otago, we made a few small changes to the car and uh, yeah, I just, I enjoyed the stages up Middle March Way, they suited the car well. Uh, the car's probably always had its strength in the faster stages, so we're still working on improving it in the tighter stuff, which this weekend will give us a good indication of how that progress is going. Um, but yeah, we're really happy with how the Suzuki's going, it's, it's all heading in the right direction. 
Glenn Inkster using all the road to take the early lead on the super special stage. But as expected, Patton was amongst the leaders over the two short nighttime super stages, with Rotorua driver Sloane Cox taking stage one honours. Patton scoring the fastest time with a second run. A disappointing night for Matt Summerfield, who stopped on stage one and despite trying, couldn't restart his car. Summerfield had high expectations after he'd scored a fantastic time on the last stage of Rally Otago. We use that road every year for the rally, so um, I've been learning it, and every year I want to go better than, and push harder than I did the year before. And uh, yeah, at the end of last year, I thought, well, oh, it's going to be pretty hard to do better than that. But uh, yeah, I definitely pushed harder uh, this year. We came around this four left, and then it was, it was just four right over crest, and I was like, I know this corner. This, uh, last year I could have done this flat out. And then I'd, as soon as I turned in, I thought, oh, this is not ideal. I'm not where I thought I was. And um, as we were sliding off the road, I was already, uh, I thought I was getting, gonna get in trouble for Nicole, so I was flat out apologizing, but um, the car came back and we carried on our merry way. Coming up, it's a race against the clock to get Matt Summerfield out onto the stages and dusty roads make for a trying time at Rally Fongaray. It's Saturday morning at the service park, but for Matt Summerfield, it was going to be a matter of just getting his car out to the stages at some point in the day after the team found bent valves in the engine. So as Hayden Patton heads to the stages, let's see what's in store with our B&T stage preview. Four stages north of Whangarei repeated over the day. Stage three, Motomaku, a 16km sprint to get the drivers warmed up. Then it's today's longest stage, Towai, 27Ks. After refuel at Kawakawa, stage five, Tapui is 17km. Then the final stage of the morning, the power stage, Helena. They call it the Mini Motu. Mike Young is competing at the Asia Pacific Championship. He was third car on the road, but it also cross entered into the New Zealand Championship. So will be the first car to set the times on each stage for the Kiwis to chase. The organizers needed a buffer between the slowest APRC cars and Hayden Patton. So two wheel drive competitor, Max Bailey, started five minutes after them with a further five minute gap to Patton behind. He would have to cope with more gravel on the roads than his competitors, but he had a perfect dust-free run. So this is the moment Hayden Patton's been waiting for to get stuck into his favourite rally roads. Wangarei is probably one of the only places in the world where you see this sort of extreme camber, so obviously the roads are built up over time to allow the water to run off, um, but then as it's going, switching between corners, as you're jumping over that, the, the crest of the road, if you like, you're almost jumping into the next camber. And you know, when you use the camber right, it's a, a bit like a, uh, a banked track on a, like what Scott Dixon does on the oval. It allows you to carry that much more corner speed, but the problem is you have to really stay in that apex if you fall out of it. It's a lot harder to bring the car back, so um, you do have to be a little bit more cautious with this with the pace notes. Um, but when you get it right, there's, there's no better feeling. Well, he's enjoying himself this morning. Stage time, 904.5. Smashes Ken Block's stage record by eight seconds. Rally reporter Patrick Malley was at the end of the stage. Aiden, how was the first stage of the morning? Yeah, it's um, obviously quite slippy with the gravel. Uh, enjoyed it, though. A bit different after uh, Argentina last week, so I have to adjust a little bit. But I uh, just got a whole lot of warning lights as well, so we're hoping it's just a sensor problem and it's uh, not actually the problem that it says it is. Ben Hunt starting one minute behind Patton. There's a light breeze blowing, but looks like Patton's dust still hanging around a bit. Centre of long small crest, hug long six left plus 30. Keep in long five right. Keep in six left plus. Ben stage time 943.1. Morning Ben, was dust an issue on that stage? Yeah, definitely, you know, it was just lingering around in those uh, places where the wind isn't getting to it. Um, yeah, apart from that, the car, you know, wasn't performing how it normally does, so we've got to sort out the boost issue there. We're, we're only making like a bar boost, so, um, yeah, we'll work on that now. I think we might have blown a pipe off. 
Now, David Holder actually led this rally in 2015, but today his target is Ben Hunt as these two line up as the most likely contenders for the championship so far in 2016. The tie wear in Whangarei, uh, even though the temperature in the air is not actually that hot at the moment, just the roads when they're swept off, they're really abrasive. They've got quite um, you know, ag aggressive rocks that don't really pull out. And so you just tear, tear uh, chunks off your tyres effectively and once they're heated up they just start melting. Hold it just one second behind Hunt here. Andrew Hawksmoor was busy between rallies as his Force Motorsport team made changes to the AP4NZ cars with Hayden Pannon sending a big to-do list even as the WRC star was in Argentina. But now onto the stages, Andrew can concentrate on his own driving, his own rally. He's never won a New Zealand title and that is still his ultimate goal in 2016. Stage time, 9.46.2. Phil Campbell looking to improve in his sixth place in Otago. Hayden's obviously that next step up from everyone at the moment um, and that's to be expected with the amount of driving he's doing. Um, ben and David though are both a little bit faster than us in Otago so yeah, definitely this weekend we'll be looking at their times and doing everything we can to get a bit closer to them. Sloan Cox had a stroke of luck here. Matt Summerfield couldn't make the start line ahead of him, so he would start the stage with a two-minute gap, and that's enough time for the dust to settle between the cars. Six right, plus 100. Wooden Bridge, 150. Sloan's second fastest in the stage, 10 seconds ahead of Hunt. Sloan looks like dust was an issue for everyone in there. How do you go? I was quite lucky because Matt Summerfield hasn't started, so I got a two minute gap luckily on that stage, but I could see why it would have been a problem for people. And do you think it'll be an issue in the next stage, or do you carry that two minute gap through to regroup? Uh, probably through to regroup, it depends on what this um, start line's like, if there's a backup or not, but hopefully carry a two minute gap because it's going to help us out. There is huge pressure on Emma Gilmore here. She broke down at the end of Otago, has no points in the 2016 championship, but a good result here could change all of that. All right, it's just four five left, I think three long. Into. All right. Hi Emma, Sloan's had a blinder through there. How did you guys get on? Yeah, Sloan was lucky to get a two minute gap there, so uh, that definitely helped. The dust was really bad, so um, yeah, I mean, we're not too far behind the other guys that had dust, so yeah, it's just going to be the, the way it is today. At this event, the crews have had two recce passes over the stages on Thursday, so pace notes will be very accurate, which comes in handy when it's hard to see the road ahead. Lance Williams has the very experienced Raymond Bennett alongside him to guide him through the stages. Glenn Engster has car owner Spencer Wynn alongside him. This is their fourth gravel rally together, but they were holding on to third place, taking the dust in their stride and showing the potential of the Skoda AP4 NZ car. Graham Featherston, sixth fastest on the stage, and that would put him into seventh overall, under a second behind David Holder. Richard Baddock moving into the top ten in his Subaru. Shannon Chambers close behind. This is the first event for the V-Dub driver in 2016. Clinton Cutting has teamed up with his former co-driver and business partner Greg Ruka and with the Possum Board Motorsport team now looking after the car, he had high hopes for good results in the WRC Proto Lancer. Then a very fast, very fast long 7 left 60, a very fast long 7 left 60, do a 6 right, don't go wide. Stage four, Towai, the longest stage of the day at 27.28 kilometres. But trouble ahead for Hayden Padden. Slow high to right. Halfway into the stage, he has caught the ailing Subaru of APRC driver, Tatsumo Kozumi. And the WRC driver is getting frustrated. Don't do, don't do that. Padden losing 20 seconds there, and then the car lost drive to the front wheels. He lost the rally lead. Cut five left. But Ben Hunt would also lose time. 
in fact, over a minute as the Japanese driver refused to pull over. David Holder catching Hunt. And then the situation became an absolute joke as both tried to get past on the same corner. All of this benefiting Sloane Cox. Still with his two-minute gap, he was able to establish a huge lead while Hunt and Holder dropped to eighth and twelfth place. Now Patrick had been out on the stages. Just how bad is the dust? With the warm weather we've been having in Whangarei, the, the stages are really dry, so the dust is terrible, let alone when you get caught behind another car, and then it's just atrocious. Emma Gilmore pushing a little too hard here but second fastest on the stage to Cox and moving up to third place overall despite that moment. Lance Williams third on the stage and that was enough to give him second overall. Glenn Inkster striking problems with his power steering. You feel it coming in because you'll be halfway through a corner and all of a sudden it, it starts to go heavy and you know I, I grew up when my first car didn't have power steering so you, you watch TV and they say they lost the power steering you just think well plenty of cars don't have power steering but when the steering's meant to be power assisted um, and on top of that you have a, a steering quickener um, all those forces amplified in a little racing steering wheel it, it, you, you, it doesn't matter how strong you are if you turn the car and it loads up and you put power on and a bit of torque steer, it'll do what it wants to do. So it, 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 it's pretty tricky. But the drama wasn't over. So, uh, Back at the stage break. start, Clinton Cunningham so, just break. getting going when he came across this nasty accident. Shannon Chambers V-dub slamming into the bridge. The crew OK, but the stage was stopped. And it's good to see they stopped the stage when there was an incident like this, but it's going to be an issue for the drivers from here on because they're going to get an assessed time, and that time will be Hayden's with the trouble he's been having here. So after four stages, Sloane Cox out in front by 31 seconds to Williams. Close between Gilmore and Turner, Holder dropping to seventh. Hayden, you lost time in that stage. You're looking a little bit frustrated coming out. Tell us about what happened. Oh, it's just uh, unfortunately we've uh, lost all front drive, so we're, we're two-wheel drive only, so it's not so ideal, and then we, we spent about... 5Ks in the dust of the car behind in front of us, so we were stopped on the stage about uh, three or four times, but uh, hey, we'll see if we can fix it. Uh, I'm not sure if we uh, have the spares here, but we'll see what we can do. Ben, you're looking a bit frustrated at the end of the stage. Tell us what happened. Yeah, it was um, pretty annoying. You know, the dust is an issue, um, and then, you know, we caught up to Hayden and uh, the guy in the last car in the APRC field, so we followed him hard up the, his um, bumper for about 5K, so... Know, getting pretty frustrated and finally got past with about a K or so to go on the stage. So other than the dust, no other issues in there? Yeah, well, the engine's um, not making any boost at the moment, so we need to try and sort that. But, you know, we've just um, learned a lot um, in the Fiesta day, so we just need to drive it more like that. Once again, the gold challenge will be run over the day one stages. Grant Blackberry, the early leader, but he was out on stage four with a broken drive shaft, handing the lead to Kingsley Jones. Jones actually up inside the top ten overall. Daniel Alexander is second by stage four. But veteran Wayne Pittams just 3.5 seconds back. And behind him, Jonathan Walker, another six seconds back, but the engine misfiring. Stage 5 to Puhi, 17 kilometres in a very popular spot for the big crowd of Kiwi spectators following Rally Whangarei. Mike Young had been penalised six minutes after his car stopped in the opening Super Stage on Friday night, but the Perth-based Kiwi was fighting back in his group in Subaru, his times actually matching those of some of the leaders. And with pattern out, Ben Hunt now had a clear road in front of him, but the boost issue hadn't improved. But Ben will be using all the experience he gained from the Fiesta days. Driving a front-wheel drive, two-litre, naturally aspirated car, it's exactly the same sort of thing as what he's got here, and he'll be using that to try and get as much speed out of the corners as possible. A lot of time to make up two after special stage four. 12.31 is time, two seconds slower than Young. 
David Holder also having to make up time. He had lost a minute to Cox by now. And David's got to be careful that he doesn't start overdriving his car. He'll know he's a minute behind, but he's got to think of the overall championship here. A minute isn't a large amount of time when Sloan's had the gap that he's had in front of him and no dust issues. And it's really going to be the afternoon that's going to show who's the quickest. Well, Holder faster so far by 3.5 seconds. Andrew Hawkswood had a slow puncture at the end of stage four, but it hadn't cost him too much time. And punctures will usually upset the balance of a car, but considering Andrew likes backing it in, it's probably not causing him an issue at all. 30, 8 left, and short, 6 right minus into 5 left. Hawkswood holding on to 5th place. Slow start for Phil Campbell though. I talked to him at the refuel earlier today. He was worried about a lack of grip and also himself firing on all four cylinders, let alone problems with the engine in the car. That'll all be playing in his head, and he's really Five struggling left. for speed here. Six left. Six right. Campbell Plus lying six. in 10th place and looking forward to getting back to the service park. Sloan Cox continued to lead, certainly wasn't backing off through the stage despite holding a 30 second margin. Well, these are the cambered roads we were talking about earlier. However, Sloan, being in a bigger Evo 10 compared to the NZ AP4 cars, showing you a great deal of commitment, and he's really not slowing down at all. And he's got the bit between his teeth, and proving the old adage that dents on the rear of the car are cool. Emma Gilmore now in a good position to gain some badly needed championship points. She was lucky to get away with this small mistake. And Emma's completely missed her breaking point here and gone through into the junction. She's exceptionally lucky that there wasn't a cliff there. Um, and while it looks like she's gotten away with it, she's actually done some damage to the roof scoop on the car. And with the dust that they're having through the day, that's going to be a real issue later on. Lance Williams holding on to second place, just nine seconds ahead of Emma. And Emma would have lost that time in just that one corner. So these guys are absolutely neck and neck at this point in the rally. Graham Featherston dropping two spots to sixth. But the big move of the day was Dylan Turner. Third fastest on the stage moved him to fourth overall. And it's good to see Dylan back out on these Whangarei stages. He's got Rob Scott next to him, so the two of them have a wealth of experience of over 100 years. Richard Baddock in eighth place in the older Subaru, behind the older boys. And the car itself being older than a number of the competitors at this rally. So now to the power stage, Helena. And it's Mike Young who sets the target time for the Kiwis. 11 minutes 36.8. That's about 30 seconds slower than Ben Hunt's 2015 stage record. Short six right, minus 60. But can Ben Hunt go faster in his car, which is down on boost, remember? Oh, that's a nasty crash and a lot of damage to the car. The stage was cancelled as the paramedics checked out Ben, who had broken ribs and was in pain. So, Patrick, what happened there? Well, Ben's obviously been pushing through the stage. He's down on power and he's just completely overcommitted through that corner. Short six right, minus 60, keep him believe. Ben's really committing to his notes on a car with no power here and it just looks like the road's throwing him right into that bank. So at the first service, it's Cox, Williams, Gilmore, the top three, but Turner less than a second back and forth, Holder in seventh, and very close to Featherston. Sloan, you're leading the rally halfway through day one at International Rally of Whangarei. Tell us what your thoughts are going into the afternoon. In the afternoon, I'm just going to sort of take it easy in the whole rally. I've got a bit of a buffer, and I know the top guys are going to be pushing on a swept road. Uh, my main aim is to be top New Zealand uh, by the end of today, just to get some good points. So I'm going to push on the same and keep a good speed going. In the two-wheel drive battle, Marcus Van Klink and Anthony Jones had traded times through the morning. 
The RX-7 driver had been spraying gravel wide, trying to hold off the escort of Jones. But this is no ordinary escort powered by a modern two-litre ZTEC engine and with a sequential box, Jones was keeping ahead with the margin only 5.4 seconds. Max Bailey doing very well to be third another nine seconds back despite giving up over 100 horsepower to the older cars. Jeff Judd in fourth in the historic class forward. Coming up on Rally Fongaray, Patton is back out on the stages, but who will lead at the overnight break? Welcome back to Rally Fongaray, round two of the Brian Green Property Group New Zealand Rally Championship. The morning stage is now repeated, that means running on roads which have been well swept by over 50 cars. Hayden Patton had replaced a drive shaft and back on track through the Maramoku 2. But in the next stage, the drive shaft failed again, so back to service for a rethink. Sloan Cox continued to lead over stage 7 and 8, but had lost that two minute gap on the road. Luckily, the dust not too bad in the afternoon. Lance Williams looking to consolidate second place. And it matched Cox's times on stage seven, but on stage eight, a small error would prove to be very costly. Lance's co-driver Crunch will be trying to calm him down in the car and really make him focus on keeping second place. But when you don't respect the camber, that's exactly what happens. David Holdred made his move, winning stage eight and taking second place from Emma Gilmore. Gilmore dropped time on stage eight when she literally ran her tyres bald. At Rally Rally Whangarei, they constantly talk about dancing between the corners, but Emma's got absolutely no grip here and it'll be more like dancing on ice. However, she will be carrying two spare tyres in the boot of her car and hopefully that'll be enough to see her through the next two stages. Dylan Turner holding fourth place, 18 seconds behind Gilmore, but he had a fast closing Andrew Hawkeswood challenging him. But Hawkeswood hit a rock in stage eight. We uh, we clipped a rock and um, and broke the front suspension, and um, yeah, that cost us dearly in the afternoon stages. We had to. Just to make, do some makeshift repairs that, um, that, that really slowed the car down. Carl Davies just outside the top ten gives us a good view of Lance Williams' predicament. This is his second rally in the Subaru and then it all goes wrong. Carl did just not get it turned into that corner and he was very lucky there was a short drop to the paddock on the outside. Unfortunately, he just makes it all worse by backing into a fence. Ah oh, well mate, we've all been there. Clint Cunningham now up to 10th in 2015. He struggled with fuel issues, but the car was on song now, even if the driver occasionally wasn't listening. Hit in three left in junction. Hit in three left in junction, short eight left. Oh, Clint, you just overcooked it. Now a repeat of stages 9 and 10. Sloan Cox continued to lead through stage 9, but on stage 10, Helena disaster struck. Come that last day we had somewhere in the 20-second buffer, somewhere in there, I'm not quite sure exactly. Uh, we went there feeling good all over the place. Uh, then a few cases from there, not sure exactly. Uh, gear selector bracket broke, so it actually stranded us in second gear. And while we're trying to get third gear to cruise out, I went up in first gear in neutral, so it turned out being a nightmare. So we got it back into low first and second gear and cruise out of stage, but we lost two to three minutes. Mike Young was putting up stage times equal to David Holder. Over the final two stages, these two were separated by just 1.2 seconds. But Young had that six-minute penalty, so it was Holder who took over the lead in Rally Fongaray and luckily just missed that bridge. And David's performance shows you how important it is to never give up in rallying. 
and in just a couple of stages, he's gone from being well over a minute behind the leader to leading this rally by over a minute. And with Cox delayed, Emma Gilmore moved into second, but she was running out of tread, now one minute and four seconds behind Holder. And these stages north of Whangarei are super abrasive. All the competitors today are really complaining about excessive tyre wear, and obviously the two spare tyres that Emma had did not manage to see her through the day. Also complaining about tyre wear and lucky to miss that bridge on the spin, Dylan Turner holding on to third. Featherston in fourth and just eight seconds further back from Turner. And Richard Batter collecting the final day bonus point in fifth place. But suspension problems at cost Hawkswood, who would finish sixth. Phil Campbell frustrated in eighth, well below his potential. Phil's still struggling in this car. He's not showing as much confidence as he usually does, and hopefully the team can fix it so he can have a real crack at tomorrow. And Clint Cunningham ninth, a good day. Clinton's got this car running with Possum Ball Motorsport, and we haven't seen a recurrence of the issues that plagued him last year. Now all he needs to do is focus on his driving and give it the jandle. Six right. Kingsley Jones had led the gold challenge since stage four and held on to take the class victory. Wayne Pittams second in the WRX. And Warwick Redfern third. John O'Shapley taking fourth after Daniel Alexander lost time in the afternoon. That bridge catching a lot of people out. There was a presentation of trophies back at the service park and Kingsley Jones was awarded the Gold Scholarship Prize. <laughs> Just 13 seconds separated the top three in the two-wheel drive class by the end of day one. It was Marcus Van Klink who took the lead in the afternoon and he held it despite the spin on the final stage. Everyone seems to be struggling with this bridge. It's mainly due to the fact there's a lot of loose gravel sitting on tarmac and people come on it very quickly. Max Bailey only 1.4 seconds behind Van Klink. And Max has to be pretty proud with his performance here. He's been running at the top of the field and sweeping the gravel for everyone else, even considering that spin there. After holding the lead in the morning, Jones lost time on stage nine and dropped to third. Jeff Judd still in fourth. And Dave still going strong in fifth in the Honda. Dylan Thompson led what turned out to be the rookie class, keeping ahead of the Suzuki Swift of Jack Williamson. And it's a family affair for Jack, with his mother Brenda sitting next to him, calling the notes. So at the end of day one, Holder has a one minute, four second lead on Gilmore. Then it's Turner and Featherston. Baddock, a great result of fifth, but Cox now back to seventh. Jones confirmed as the gold challenge winner. And Marcus Van Klink leading the two wheel drives. So Dave, we're here at the end of day one and you must be pretty pleased because you're leading the rally. Yeah, I mean, who would have guessed after the first couple this morning? So we're yeah, really, really stoked. It's um, pretty much been a perfect day. Great to have uh, second place and uh, and some points on the board. After Targo's disappointment, it, it's great to be able to bank some points uh, today. And uh, commiserations to Sloan. You know, he drove really well today, so it was a shame they had mechanicals on the last stage. But, um, you know, very happy to have second. Coming up, a new day, more points on offer, and six stages of classic New Zealand rally roads. Welcome back to the Brian Green Property Group New Zealand Rally Championship. Light rain forecast for Sunday morning, so dust not likely to be an issue today. Let's check out the stages with the BNT Stage Preview. 
Three stages repeated first Springfield, a favourite for all drivers. Classic WRC style New Zealand stage with rolling roads, cambered corners and a stretch of tarmac very fast downhill at the end. Then Waiotira, 16 kilometres, narrower stage, followed by Tangihura, a new stage for 2016, another 16 kilometre named after the local mountain range. Well, Hayden Patton's team had found the issue in the drive line and came up with a solution overnight. Today would be about setting stage records and having a bit of fun. The boys would have worked on the car overnight and the, today is all about development, but really for Hayden, it's about having fun. And just look at that car go. Man, that is seriously cool. 1539.2, just slower than Ken Block's 2015 record. A miserable day one for Matt Summerfield, but seven bonus points up for grabs on day two. As far as Matt and Nicole are concerned, they've only just started their rally. They're out there to go and win today and throw caution to the wind. And if they can, beat Hayden in the process. Great shots here, good start too, second fastest to Patton. Dylan Turner in a good position to challenge Emma Gilmore in the overall standings, off to a good start with the third fastest time. For David Holder though, today would be about holding the overall rally lead. He was in the same position last year when he crashed out. If he can finish today though, he will lead the championship and score his first win. So a lot at stake. The key here for David is actually not to be too conservative. Rally drivers really struggle when they go slow, so he's got to keep that speed up just enough to keep the hunger, not throw the car off the road and not lose time. So a solid start, fourth fast as he holds on to his lead. Emma Gilmore was in second place on day two at Otago when her turbo failed. So the team really looking here for a bit of redemption. And Emma's always shown pace, but what she's looking for here is consistent speed. And it looks like the team have really found the right recipe. 2.5 seconds slower than Turner, so she's safe in second. Phil Campbell will be looking to improve today. And I spoke with Phil in the service park before the start of the stage. They've softened the car up in order to try and give Phil a bit more grip and a bit more confidence. And looking here, you can tell that he's got a lot more positive steering input and he just looks a lot more comfortable in the car. In fact, Phil was sixth fastest, just 3.4 seconds slower than Emma over 28.5 kilometres, so that's much better. showing good speed on Sunday morning in the Ecolite Skoda. There's still a few teething problems in these NZ AP4 cars, but Glenn and the Skoda are showing a huge amount of potential, and I think this is a rally winning car in the future. Unfortunately, a puncture late in the stage slowed Glenn Inkster. Andrew Hawkes went next up, but the engine is smoking in a bad way. Yesterday, Andrew had a problem when he hit a rock and damaged his suspension. Unfortunately, that had the consequence of also damaging the alternator, made the engine overheat, and now it's on its last legs. Well, what's happened, Andrew? Oh, we started off this morning with it. You know, the engine was a little bit crook, but, um, you know, we were hopeful that we could get through today, but uh, unfortunately, it's, it's cut itself in half, so... That's the end of our rally, unfortunately. Sloane Cox looking to fight back from seventh place and hunting those day two bonus points. But again, a small mistake proved costly. Ah, that's those cambers again. Man, he was lucky not to tip it there. Well, Sloane, wheels off the cart. Yeah, unfortunately, cut it too tight on the right-hander. Lifted me up on two wheels and drove me into the bank on the left hand as not quite get around it. Luckily we didn't slice the bank on the next corner, we started the road, but hopefully we can get it fixed and get back out there in the afternoon. Stage 12, Wado Taylor and stage 13, Tungi Huda, and again it was Patton setting the benchmark. He smashed Pontus Tinnemann's record and set a new record on stage 13 to lead the day two standings. 
Matt Summerfield holding on to second for the day. That's five bonus points, but he must be wondering when his luck will come. That failure on Friday and Saturday really costing him in the championship standings. What really impresses me with Matt is that even with all that in the back of his head, he still shows a huge amount of commitment to his notes. Unfortunately, Graham Featherston was out on stage 12 with a dead battery, so he'll leave Whangarei with just two points from day one. Emma Gilmore continued to hold second place overall, and by the service break, she was up to third for the day two results. Dylan Turner backed off slightly to conserve his third place. And that's a sensible move by Dylan. He's never been on an NZRC podium, so he wants to get there without throwing it off the road. Keeping it on the road, David Holder fifth for day two, but the important result was the overall rally lead. He was taking no risks. Plus 30. Five right plus. Flip. Six left minus. But Phil Campbell, well, he had to push, though, now that his car was handling better. Phil will be thinking about the long game here. He's really got to focus on the championship points. And considering he had a bad day on day one, he'll be hoping to grab every single point he can from today. And after being in last place on Friday, Mike Young was up to seventh place. An impressive drive by the young Kiwi, who was now just 50 seconds adrift from sixth position. Richard Baddock, fifth overall. But his centre diff had failed, so he backed off to get to the finish. Glenn Inkster showed some great pace in the Skoda. You can see it here. But he was caught out by a hole on the road on stage 12. And the problem with showing commitment is that it can catch you out when you least expect it. Just like that. And recovering from trouble, Carl Davies had repaired the Sabaro. In fact, drove to Auckland and back, got back at 2 in the morning just to get some stage miles under his belt on day 2. What a good effort. Right, and Brian Green also back after changing a diff overnight. Brian's showing a lot of improvement in this car. It's very different to drive compared to his Evo 10, and I can't wait to see how well he goes later on in rallies like Gisborne. So day two standings at the service park. Hayden Patton leading from Matt Summerfield. Holder in fifth, but he still has the overall rally lead. Sadly, Phil Campbell was forced to retire later in the afternoon. And a light rain shower dampened the roads, but the country piece was shattered with the arrival of Hayden Patton and the Hyundai i20. After the issues he was having on day one, Hayden's focus for today has really been to get out there and entertain the crowd. For him, winning day two was just the icing on the cake. Matt Summerfield may have been a wee way off Patton's pace, but still a great result to be second on day two. So frustrating for him to have a mechanical failure on leg one. If Matt, Nicole and the team can just get their ducks in a row, I reckon this car can really start winning some events. Now the two-wheel drive class is contested over both days. Marcus Van Klink had the RX-7 screaming across the hilltops. And he had to, to keep Anthony Jones at bay. The two were never more than 10 seconds apart over 16 stages. In the end, Van Klink took the victory by a margin of just four seconds. This is going to be one of the battles to watch as the championship progresses. Max Bailey did well too to finish third in his first championship outing since crashing out at Coromandel in 2015. Jeff Judd coming home fourth in the Escort. And Dylan Thompson leading the rookie class, finishing ahead of the Suzuki of the Williamsons.
David Holder finally putting his 2015 crash behind him and scored his maiden New Zealand Championship rally win. Although there was one final scare on the last stage. 40, bridge, into six left. Tightens to a five minus. Oh, oh sorry, 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 sorry. You are right, on to it, mate. Yeah, sorry, bro. <laughs> 60. Great recovery. A great effort too by Emma Gilmore and her team. Second overall and look to have found the setup to challenge the top drivers in the championship. Hopefully that first win is not too far away for Emma Gilmore. And a sensible drive too by Dylan Turner to finish in third place and book that spot on the podium. A great result too for Mike Young overtaking Richard Baddock to take fourth. If it wasn't for the six minute penalty, he would have been just seconds away from Holder. So great to see that he didn't give up. Baddock nursing his Subaru home to fourth, but that will lift him to third in the championship standings. Long six to a four, long. And attacking the corners like his co-driver Clint Cunningham finally getting a great result in his Lancer Proto, sixth place. So confirming the day two standings, Hayden Patton will get seven points, Summerfield will take five for second place. But in the overall standings for the Rally Fongaray, it's David Holder with his maiden victory. Marcus Van Klink with that narrow win in two-wheel drive. But in the end, just one winner and David Holder, both relieved and excited, back at the service park. How do you feel? Yeah, I mean, awesome. Great, great for the team and all the boys that have put in all the effort, and especially for Hayden. That's, um, he's done a lot of, lot of things with me, so, yeah, really stoked. And you did a fantastic drive today. You've also taken away the Dunlop drive of the rally and four brand new tyres. Oh, beauty. <laughs> I won't say no to that. Um, yeah, so now we're all on for Canterbury and, uh, yeah, get in there and try and stay in front of the championship. Very happy to be on the podium. The team have put so much effort into this car and, uh, and all our sponsors as well. So to be able to repay them with a, with a good result is great. You've always had the speed, so nice to bring it all together over a course of a day. Yeah, it's a tough event, Rally Whangarei, and, and it's a long rally and they're tough stages. So uh, we, we're pretty consistent all events, so uh, we've definitely improved in the tighter stuff. So, yeah, really happy with how the car's going. So it's a champagne Sunday in Rally Whangarei for David Holder, Emma Gilmore and Dylan Turner wrapping up third place in that spot on the podium. Let's check out the points table then. Holder was 64 to Patton's 51, but with Patton heading back to the WRC, unlikely to do any more events, it'll be Baddock, Hunt and Gilmore who will have to take the fight to David Holder. Next up, it's the Lone Star Rally of Canterbury, our first forestry rally of the 2016 season. So we'll see you upside down in June.